okay so we are going to talk about the equation of state right you can see this on your screen right okay yes sir okay now as you see in the stellar interior the sometimes the not sometimes most of the times the temperature is so high that most elements are completely ionized so in the stellar interior what do we have high temperature and as a result of this as a result of both these factors we have electrons ions as well as photons and they are present at any r they are present almost everywhere now what happens then what happens is that they collide with each other very frequently and as a result of the collision they exchange energy so the electron ion and photons they collide right and exchange energy fine this is very logical and thus local thermal equilibrium is achieved very quickly i will talk about lte in more details in a later class just let me quickly go through this right now okay now what happens as a result of this establishment of local thermodynamic equilibrium so as a result of this what happens is that all of these the ions electrons and photons they have identical temperatures locally this is very important i am not talking about globally it is not possible to talk about globally why because in the different parts of the star the temperatures are different right so i am talking about local thermal equilibrium lt not global global it is not there a star is never in global thermal equilibrium because in the very center very high temperature outside very low so there is no global but only local part if i am talking about some very small part only now however as i am as i am telling you we have to remember that there still exists a very large scale temperature gradient high temperature to low temperature across the star which is tr temperature as a function of distance from the center however a temperature gradient exists but we will assume that this is small enough to be neglected for thermodynamical purposes so we will assume small temperature gradient okay and small enough so that we can talk about the thermodynamics of stars right so you see the concept of local thermal equilibrium simplifies our problems tremendously yes so since you have no idea let me spend some time about the local thermodynamic equilibrium so what is it now the basically the existence of thermodynamic equilibrium or local thermodynamic equilibrium in the stellar interior it leads to very simplifications great simplifications and this in fact this lt is the fourth assumption of stellar structure i have already talked about several assumptions in my first class so as i was saying it brings great simplification fication right now to understand this concept what i am going to do i am going to talk about some approximate i am going to show you some approximate values of temperature and pressure of the star now you see the 
एवरेज प्रेशर एंड एवरेज टेम्परेचर ग्रेडियंट इन द स्टेलर इंटीरियर यू कैन एस्टिमेट आई हैव ऑलरेडी टॉक्ड अबाउट दिस एवरेज इन माय प्रीवियस क्लासेस राइट एंड आई एम जस्ट राइटिंग यू द एक्सप्रेशन सो द एवरेज एवरेज प्रेशर एंड टेम्परेचर वी कैन राइट दिस डाउन लाइक दिस यू सी हियर दिस इज द एक्सप्रेशन फॉर द एवरेज प्रेशर ग्रेडियंट इन द स्टेलर इंटीरियर सिमिलरली वी कैन राइट डाउन द एवरेज टेम्परेचर ग्रेडियंट आई एम यूजिंग बेसिकली द प्रीवियस इक्वेश ऑफ स्टेलर स्ट्रक्चर हियर सो दिस इज द एवरेज टेम्परेचर ग्रेडियंट relationship i'm just using the central value here dpdr now these values can be compared with the predictions for the solar standard model at r by r solar equal to half means half of the radius now from there we get the values of dpdr equal to you will see we get the value of dpdr approximately equal, equal to minus 1.3 into 10 to the power 5 dyne per centimeter cube and dtdr we get the value approximately equal to minus 1.3 into 10 to the power minus 4 kelvin per centimeter now the main free path for interaction collisions basically between the gas particles in the stellar interior let me talk about them is basically given by this relationship 1 by n into sigma what is sigma sigma is basically the interaction cross section now for collisions of electrons or ions with other electrons or ions sigma is approximately in the range of 10 to the power minus 16 to 10 to the power minus 18 per centimeter square so this is basically for collisions of electrons or ions or ions with other electrons or ions this one is now for interactions of photons with electrons or ions this sigma is of the order of much lower 10 to the power minus 24 cm square now using the relation n is equal to Rho average divided by mu into m h. The number density of particles can be estimated in the stellar interior, and this number you see comes out to be of this value. Here, n is approximately equal to one point seven ten to the power twenty four. Now I am. You will notice that I have given here all the values in terms of. solar mass solar radii so to get an estimation in terms of the solar values it is very good now using these figures what we find is that the mean free path is of the order of this is of the order of 10 to the power minus 7 cm for interaction among particles and this is of the order of 1 cm for interactions involving photons right so this is particles and this is photons therefore from the comparison of the previous gradients this ones these two gradients here with the average mean free path estimated from this value here what do we see we observe that the pressure and temperature variations within a few 
main free path are very small okay for example let us consider a distance variation of the order of larger mean free path say let us consider example let us consider the distance variation of the order of ha bolo sir photon er khetre mean free path ta beshi hoy yes and for electrons and ions yes 1 cm and this is from this estimations i am doing although these are average but this is an estimation right now it is largely different now see what i am showing you what i am telling you for an example let us consider a distance variation of the order of 1 cm then we see from this equation you see the pressure relationship what do we see of the order of 1 this distance what do you see what we see is that delta from the dp dr right a relation ta jeta age amra dekhlam shekhan theke what we will see is that we will get the value of delta p to be of the order of 10 to the power 6 9 per centimeter cube sorry per centimeter square i ask you to check these calculations yourself <clears throat> now this is a very large number but although it is very large this is a very small fraction of the pressure in the stellar interior right can you dekho because delta p by pc is of the order of 10 to the power minus 11 such a small number okay similarly aj if we consider this variation similarly from the dt dr relationship previously aj here from this relationship again you will see that we will get the value of delta t to be of the order of 10 to the power minus 4 kelvin which means delta t by tc is again of the order of 10 to the power minus 11 very small so in this conditions p and t can be considered as constants in the interior region so we can consider p and t as constants in interior region right and this characterizes the existence of local thermodynamic equilibrium of course we have to remember that some deviation from thermodynamic equilibrium is required why come on this is required because there is an existence of energy flux how can you explain this thing how can you explain this thing without the violation of thermodynamic equilibrium right so remember that some deviation of this thermodynamic equilibrium is required to explain the energy flux emitted from the star but for the cases right now this lt we can consider this now i am i will talk about this part where we will deviate we consider the deviation from lt and discuss the about energy flux in a later lecture but right now let us talk about lt okay you see the equation of state eta ke onek shomoy we we can write like this equation of state basically it describes how the pressure changes with density temperature and also composition right so we can write like this p is equal to p rho t and xi this is equation 1 now we already know the eos 
for ideal gas right which is also known as ideal gas law and that is p is equal to n k b t this is just the version of pv is equal to nrt right now this is equation 2 okay so far so good here as i'm saying before n is basically the number density of particles kb is boltzmann constant right now it is important to know that why should we consider this equation of state when we already have our very good applicable equation of state of for ideal gas which is pv is equal to nrt or p is equal to nkvt now you have to remember that this e igl or equation of state for ideal gas it can be deviated right so there are cases where this will not be applicable so let us list them let us try to list them so eos can depart from the classical ideal ga gas law in three ways let us name them what are the ways number 1 when the electrons become relativistic number 2 in some cases electrons can become degenerate now what is degenerate i will talk about it just sometimes from now now in such cases when it becomes degenerate we have this so called degenerate pressure which balances the gravity now the degenerate pressure is most important pressure now this is most important in very compact stars so important in white dwarfs and neutron stars now there is the third case when we can have departure from the classical gas law and that is in massive stars the pressure pressure provided by radiation or basically photons they can become important now when i am talking about photons i do know that photons follow bohr's einstein statistics so of course they will not follow the classical ideal gas law which basically applies to maxwell boltzmann distribution right okay now before we talk about how to estimate the equation of state how to calculate the equation of state for the various cases including the ones that i have shown here we have to first establish a unified framework to calculate the equation of state so let us establish a unified framework hello sir yes sir apni mone ekhane bolte jai je p soman n k v t equation ta ke amader modify korte hobe eta bolte jai chen sir yes you can say je what i am telling you is that e p is equal to n k b n k t this relationship this applies for ideal gas right now when a star evolves in some cases you can consider it as an ideal gas but in sometimes depending on the mass of the star there can be situations where the ideal gas law is not valid because the gas itself is not ideal something different happens it can be the gas can become relativistic photons can dominate 
then sometimes there are electrons positrons both present as well pair production becomes dominant sometimes degenerate c comes into play and when stars become degenerate then we have two types of degeneracies non relativistic relativistic degeneracy so many things can happen right right now we just know about ideal gas law because we think ideal gas is very special but we do know that real gas they behave very differently compared to ideal gas because there are interaction between the particles right now i have not talked about interactions at all say for example charged particles coulomb interactions will be there that in fact will alter the way the gas pressure is there right so we have so many considerations i'm just slowly starting to talk about the various possibilities in which we will describe the star and what i am i want to tell you is that there can be situations where there will be different type of pressure form this relation p is equal to rho t xi it will be very different compared to that for an ideal gas law bujhte perecho acha acha now as i was telling Oh, we would like to establish a unified frame. For that, I am going to define what what you already know, the density of states. This is important. Okay. Now let us consider the density of quantum states in a phase space. Right. Okay. Now we know from Heisenberg's uncertainty principle that delta x, delta p x is greater than equal to h cross by two, right? Now this is equation three. So we have if we consider all three dimensions, then we will have this relationship. right this is equation 4 fine now physically what does this mean this means that well equation 4 it basically means that a particle occupies at least a volume of h cross by 2 whole cube this relationship right i am talking about this here at least a particle occupies a volume of h cross by 2 cube in the phase space so in a volume what will happen the number of states with momentum between momentum between p and p plus dp is expected to be roughly you see this thing v into 4 pi p square dp divided by h cross by 2 whole cube this is equation 5 where what is this 4 pi p square dp this is basically the differential volume in phase space right differential volume in phase space now we would like to do more rigorous calculation than this uh, rough estimate so let us consider so more rigorous approach for dos density of states 
So let us consider a box with sides LX, LY and LZ, right? Then the quantum states in the box are described by quantum states in box are described by standing waves. Okay. Sides of the box. Let us consider a box with sides. LX, LY, LZ. Quantum states in the box will be described by standing waves. Right? So, what will be the wave function? This is basic. We know I am just writing down. So, the wave function is basically this based here we know from basic quantum mechanics this is equation 6 where this a is a fixed normalization constant now the this is basically the wave function right okay now the wave number is given by kx ky and kz this is basically given by these relations i am not deriving or doing anything i am just writing the result this is from basic right now the number of states okay now this is important so after this so the number of states with wave number between kx and kx plus dkx similarly ky and ky plus dky and kz remember this is small letter and kz plus dkz is given by you see this relationship here this is equation 8 what is this v v is basically the volume which is given by lx ly and lz okay so this is the number of states so this is basically the number of states with this right wave number values now what we want is the number of quantum states with wave number magnitude between k and k plus dk so the number of quantum states with wave number magnitude between k between k and k plus dk is then given by here this thing this is equation 9 now why does this 8 number appear here you see this factor 8 arises because we are only counting the states in the quadrangle with positive nx ny and nz this is important you should remember now after this the wave number we do know is related to momentum right by p is equal to h cross k this is equation 10 this was equation 9 this is equation 10 okay so with all this machinery take with all these equations now we are ready to write down the density of states hence the density of states between p between p to p plus dp is given by you see this relation here now this is very important you see what 
this equation 11 is very similar to our guess equation previous this one you see it is very important more rigorous before what we did here this is quite similar to that other than by a constant factor now the density of states between p plus dp again so density of states between p to p plus dp per unit volume volume is then given by this relationship here equation 12 okay now it is important to note that so far we have neglected one very important point we have neglected the very fact that for each state with given momentum there could be several quantum states with different spins or polarizations this we have neglected so if the number of spin states spin states is gs then the modified density of states dos right per unit volume is basically you see this relation equation 13 now here gs is often called the statistical weight right now very important you see for electrons protons neutrons what is the spin their spin is s is equal to half and so gs is equal to 2s plus 1 equal to 2 right for neutrinos the spin is half but still we have gs is equal to 1 since we have left-handed neutrinos due to parity violation due to, because due to having left-handed neutrinos from parity violation right now what about photons now we do know that their spin is one but it has only two polarizations perpendicular to the direction of propagation and as a result again gs is equal to two okay now so we have talked about the estimation of the density of states so after that let me talk about the occupation number sir bolo sir oi je neutrino er khetre gs ta 1 hocche tarpor photon er khetre gs ta 2 hocche ekhane sei helicity er jonno eta hoy ki you can say like that what i am telling you is that for photon for neutrino you say we can only have the left-handed neutrinos due to parity violation this right now and for photons that is spin to one high but again it has only two polarizations perpendicular to the direction of propagation that's why gs is equal to two okay now so you see from statistical mechanics we know that the occupation number for each state 
is given by this relation here equation 14 where E is the energy K is the Boltzmann constant and mu is the chemical potential right now you see energy is basically is in general a function of momentum now for fermions we have plus sign right say for example electrons protons right and they obey fermi direct statistics for bosons like photons we have the minus sign and they have integer spin so they follow bose einstein statistics now the density of states what about it okay now the density of states of particles with momentum between p and p plus dp is obtained by multiplying basically the density of states with occupation number and this gives us this relation which is equation 15 so the total number of particles now you see the total number of particles can be obtained by integrating over all the momentum right and this gives us this relationship n is equal to integration 0 to infinity np dp equation 16 okay so more or less our uh, formalism is there so with this formal definitions of occupation number and uh, density of states and occupation number now we are ready to estimate the internal energy velocity kinetic energy density as well as the pressure okay so now we will talk about kinetic energy density okay now you see as our particles can be relativistic so we have to use a general formula for the relation between e and p now this is provided by the special relativity so for free particles we have e is equal to right now this is equation 17 okay now m is remember m is the rest mass of particle now the total energy has two parts you see the total energy can be written like this where the rest mass energy is this part and this is the kinetic energy okay now let us consider two asymptotic limits the first one is the non-relativistic when the particle is non-relativistic what happens then you see in this case this is a very uh, general result i'm just writing down the result here so energy can be approximately equal to mc square plus p square by twice m right now this one is equation 18 this one is equation 19 okay now what does this mean this means that e k is equal to p square by twice m 
relation 20. Okay. Now let us consider the other limit which is the when the particle is ultra relativistic or extreme relativistic. So number 2 is ER or UR. Okay. Al extreme relativistic or ultra relativistic. And when does this happen? This means it happens when P is much much greater than MC. So what happens is that in this case the first term of this equation over here can be neglected. Right. And what do we have? We just have E is equal to PC and so EK is equal to PC. This is equation 21. Now notice that this is identical to relation for photons. Okay. Now from special relativity we have P is equal to gamma mv and E is equal to now I am talking about next part and E is equal to gamma mc square. Gamma is the Lorentz factor and so as a result we can write V is equal to c square p by E. This is equation 22. Now if we substitute this in equation 17 over here then we will have this relation. So, substituting equation 22, which was this equation, right, in equation 17, we get this, which is equation 23. Now, it is easy to show what happens for non-relativistic case. What happens is that, V becomes approximately equal to P by M and for ultra relativistic or extreme relativistic case V becomes equal to C. Okay. Now the kinetic energy per unit volume or also called kinetic energy density which is basically kinetic energy per unit volume it can be obtained by integrating over the product yeah. Bolo? Sorry, ultra relativistic ultra relativistic momentum is much much greater than MC this part I am considering two limits non relativistic and ultra relativistic ok Achha. now kinetic energy density I was talking about so which is basically the kinetic energy per unit volume right Ke per unit volume. So it can be obtained by integrating over the product of number density of particles and their kinetic energy. And the result is this kinetic energy density U. This is how we estimate equation 24. Okay.